Good morning. Thank you for being here today. I trust that you've had a good week and are excited about being in the Lord's house to uh, share together in worship. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings upon us as we worship. Father God, we are thankful for this Lord's day and we are thankful, Lord, for the strength to be in your house and we thank you, Father, that uh, we are able to be together this day to rejoice in the things that you have done for us, to look to you to bless us in fellowship, to look to you to uh, hear our prayers, to look to you to allow your word to be revealed to us, and Father, to, to be strong in fellowship with one another. Let the love of Christ grow in us. I pray in his name. Amen. Not today. Okay. All right. If we don't have the special, then let's see what else we're going to do here. Uh, some announcements is what we're going to do next. Uh, choir practice right after service okay so if you can be a part of that we will appreciate that uh, our Sunday school remember we are not at 845 but now at 9 o'clock and worship at 10 o'clock so uh, let the word out for those that may be wanting to come and join us at that point so uh, still doing uh, services uh, where people can uh, see it at home and join us at home. Uh, let me just remind you, if you're joining us at home, uh, please remember that uh, we have uh, opportunity for you to give online as well as here. So uh, please make a, a point to do that. Uh, we still are having to pay bills on a regular basis, so we need you to be diligent in your giving. Uh, prayer request, uh, please get them in. Uh, send them to my phone, text, email, whatever, but uh, get your prayer request. If you're at home, uh, send them in. If you are sitting out here in front of me right now looking at me, remember to uh, write down your prayer request and uh, give, them, give them to me. Uh, we've got uh, some who are being pretty diligent and giving us a little note and saying, uh, these are the names I'd like for you to have on the prayer list. So please uh, take care of doing that for us. Uh, my hearing is not as good as it once was, and I, I strain to hear you because when you call out a name, you, uh, you're far away. So uh, let us know what your prayer requests are. Finance Committee, uh, March the 4th at 7 o'clock. Uh, any other announcements? I guess not. Okay, so let's push ahead. We stand as we do seek you first. Seek you.
our prayer needs again have been printed and uh, there's probably some papers around uh, that you can pick up uh, we are looking at uh, some of the names that are on your prayer list and to that name uh, list of names uh, we want to add William Garner uh, also the name of Lisa Jackson uh, Susan Dozier uh, Dale Von Cannon is a friend of ours who is being placed on a liver transplant uh, list. Uh, Dale had uh, his mother to uh, die from a serious kidney, uh, uh, excuse me, liver transplant. Uh, his mother passed away from that situation and he is very anxious about uh, wanting to do the best that he can for his family and so he allowed himself to be placed on the transplant list uh, and to say he's scared to death would be an understatement right now so uh, pray for Dale uh, Dale is a relatively young man and uh, he he said that he would he would really like to see his kids grow up but uh, we uh, just want to uh, assure him that his uh, family would be remembered here at church. Uh, so if you would do that, that would be great. Uh, are there some other names that you want to add to our list today? Brian? Dad? Okay. Savannah Childress was found, uh, the 15-year-old, so she has been located, and that is good. Uh, Larry Ingram, uh, some special uh, prayer for Larry and circumstances that he's dealing with right now. And want to continue remembering Ernie and the passing of his mother. Uh, are there others that you want to share? Mike and Patty Wilson. Mike and Patty Wilson. Okay, so let's remember the Wilson family. All right, yeah. others? Remember my mama. She's not his leader. Okay, Louise Gillen. All right, anyone else? Our grandson is on there. His eye surgery is coming up on Wednesday. So Again? Our grandson is already on there, Carter. Carter. His eye surgery on Wednesday. Okay. Carter Douglas, eye surgery on Wednesday. Okay. Any others? Another praise request. It's good to see Kathy back after a long, hard battle with this nasty mess. So, Kathy, it is good to see you today, and we're thankful you're here to share with us. It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, continue keeping them in your prayers, okay? All right. Anyone else? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that prayer is an avenue of us being able to talk with you and to share with you our hearts and our thoughts and our anxieties and our hurts and our pains our rejoicing, our praise. 
And Father, we are grateful that we can lift to you those that have special needs and say to you that because we love them, we uh, want to see you deal with them in the riches and power that you can deal and bring the healing of the great physician to bodies that are hurting and bring strength to family and encouragement to family and comfort to families that are dealing with the death of a loved one. Uh, Father, we rejoice when we see those who have been sick able to be back with us. We rejoice, O oh Lord, when we can be together and worship and pray together. Father, we join our hearts together for those that do not have a relationship, a personal salvation relationship with Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, for that person uh, that they can come to know him. We pray that we might be instruments to help that person claim Christ as their personal Savior. Father, as we open your word today and look into this word, speak through this word to us that we might, uh, we might see ourselves in the strength and power of this word. We thank you, O oh Lord, that many prayers have been answered in recent days. and We rejoice in those answers. We pray, O oh Lord, that in our time of worship today that Jesus would be seen. We pray that we would be drawn closer in love and fellowship. And Father, we pray for our state and nation. The things that we face every day are so much different than what we considered ordinary life to be. And we're still praying for the healing of our nation in the pandemic and the healing of our nation in the social unrest that uh, is just overtaking us. Uh, Father, we need leaders that will be godly leaders, that will be the people that, that they should be to lead a nation, to lead our state. We ask, Father, for help that only you can give to cause people to do the things that you would have done. Hear us as we pray the unspoken needs that are being lifted to you. Father, have your way and let us, let us wait upon you for leadership and guidance in our individual lives. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. This responsive reading is set up a little different. If you'd be so kind to join us where it says worshipers. From John's vision on the Isle of Patmos to the angel of the church in Sardis write. I know your works. You have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. Be alert and strengthen what remains, which is about to die. For I have not found your works complete before my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, I know your works, because you have limited strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Look, I have placed before you an open door that no one is able to close. I am coming quickly. Hold on to what you have, so that no one can take your crown. Anyone who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. I will give the victor some of the hidden manna. I will also, also give, give him a white, white stone, stone. And, and on the stone, stone the new name is inscribed that no one knows except the one who receives it.
Will you stand as we do? I've got peace like a river. In the book of Revelation, we have been studying, sharing in our messages uh, concerning the churches of Philadelphia is the one we're going to talk about today, but we have talked about other churches along this line through the book of Revelation. Today, we're going to talk about the church in Philadelphia. Uh, the name Philadelphia means a love of the brothers, love of the brethren. Uh, and when we see this as being the only church that is, that is very strongly recognized as doing some of the right things, then we are going to hopefully understand that love is the mark of a Christian that sets us apart. Now, before we, before we read uh, from the third chapter of Revelation, I want to give to you a verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and the verse comes to us uh, in verse 9 and uh, the verse is this concerning brotherly love concerning brotherly love you have no need that I should write to you for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. What's Paul saying? I don't really need to tell you about this concept of love because you are directly taught by God what love is. You are taught by God 
to love one another. So then we go to the book of Revelation to the church of Philadelphia, and this church is open to the love of God. So let's see what uh, Christ says to the church in Philadelphia. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere. I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Several things that we want to share this morning. Uh, if we were to go to the book of 1 John, the fourth chapter and the 19th verse, there's a short verse there that says, we love him, why? Because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. In John chapter 13, verse 34, John says, or Jesus says, a new commandment that I give to you. And what was that new commandment? That you love one another as I have loved you. Well, this new command to love, uh, 1 John 4, 9 or 19, we love him before, because he first loved us. Who's he talking about? Our Heavenly Father. Jesus said, A new command I give to you that you love one another. The Son, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is talked about in Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 5. Uh, and what it says concerning the Holy Spirit, is this. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that was given to us. Now let me see. If I count this right, there is action of the Father concerning love. There is action of Jesus concerning love. There is action of the Holy Spirit concerning love. So the whole Trinity is very active in being sure that our lives are fed the love of God so that we might feed others the love of God. And so this is where the church at Philadelphia is at right at this point. Love God love your fellow man, well, that might mean that their fellow man 
that might mean that there are some people who are not believers. You know, sometimes it's fairly easy to love the believers. And sometimes we forget about those who are lost out here in the world. And maybe we're not loving the lost the way that we need to, but we're talking about loving everybody. Not just believers, but we're talking about loving everybody. We're looking at loving people so that we will be able to share the gospel with these people. You know, people don't want to hear what you've got to say if they do not sense that you have a genuine care and a genuine love for them, they really don't care much what you've got to say. The second part is the problem for a lot of churches, is loving the lost. But this church at Philadelphia, this, this church had a vision to share the gospel in their community. And Jesus said, he has set an open door before them. Now I want you to think with me for just a minute about the open door that Jesus has set in front of the people at Philadelphia. And a part of the problem here at Philadelphia, uh, the church was located on a very strategic trade route uh, it was on a route that was the main route from Rome to the rest of the east. Uh, Philadelphia was at one time called the gateway to the east. Uh, being that, there were several things that uh, gave an open door to the church at Philadelphia. One of those things was that it was also known as the little Athens. Now, if you go back to Athens and you study about Athens, Athens was known for the worship of many gods. Well, Philadelphia had many temples to many gods in their city. Even though it was a relatively small city, it had a number of temples that were worshiping gods that were not the God of all creation. The other thing was this was giving to the church an open door to share the gospel with people who needed to hear about the one true God. And so this was an open door for them. This was, if you love these lost people enough, you will share the gospel message with these people who are worshiping other gods and not the true God. The other problem was that Philadelphia, along with Sardis and a number of other cities, had been destroyed by an earthquake years before these words were written. There were many people who did not want to go back to Philadelphia. There were many people who referred to Philadelphia as the burnt land. I don't want to go back to the burnt land. This gave the people of Philadelphia an opportunity to say, God loves us and God wants you to be a part of what is happening here. Come back to the burnt land and worship God with us. Come back and minister and serve with us here uh, after the earthquake and they were rebuilt. It would seem then that as much as Philadelphia was a fairly stable city, this stable city seemingly did not have the security that other towns might have had. But Jesus reveals himself to the church. Uh, these things says he who is holy. 
Jesus is speaking about himself, holy. He who is true. He who has the keys of David. He who has the keys of David is Jesus' claim to being a part of the Godhead. God is the one who had the keys of David. And with Jesus claiming to also have the keys of David, Jesus is claiming his position as a part of God. And for Jesus to make this statement to anyone except this church, it would almost be blasphemous words for this man called Jesus to be claiming a part of being God. So Jesus is revealing who he is. I am the one who opens and no one shuts. I am the one who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. I know what you're all about. And listen, I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. You have a little strength. You have kept my word. You have not denied my name. And as Jesus presents himself to the church, holy, it was necessary for him to present himself holy before the church. It was necessary for him to present himself true. It was necessary for him to do these things so that he could then reveal that he is God. Holy and true in words, in actions, in deed, in purpose. He is the one that is true and faithful. He is the one that is bringing this message to the church. He is the one that is talking to a church that is situated right in the middle of a city of many gods and these people need to hear about the one true God. And Jesus says, I have set before you an open door to share this gospel. Now, should Jesus be speaking to us today? And should Jesus say to us, I have given to you an open door to minister right where you're at? What kind of opportunities for ministry and service would you recognize? What types of opportunities would you say that we're taking advantage of or are we missing out on them? And we're probably missing out on a lot. I have set before you an open door and no man can close the open door that I have set before you. In the sixth chapter of Revelation, verse 10 of chapter 6, we're talking about the cry of the martyrs. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? How did they, the martyrs, how did they address God? How did they address Christ? Holy and true. When are you going to avenge our blood? When are you going to act in judgment against those that have tormented us? And folks, no matter what kind of trouble we may undergo here on this earth, there's coming a day, you know, we, we sometimes think that if God would just give us the right to do it, we could, we could execute judgment on people and make it fit just the way we want to. 
We can get back at these people and do to them just exactly what we want to do. And we feel like many times that we would be better at it than God would be. But listen and listen carefully. People are doing you wrong. Let God handle it. There's coming a day that God will vindicate all of his children. And God will enter judgment against those who have judged and done you wrong. God knows better how to dish out judgment than you do. In spite of the fact that we think we could do a good job at it. In spite of the fact that we think we could nail them just the way they need to be nailed. Leave it alone. Let God do it. He'll do it the right way. We'll mess it up. We'll mess it up. Leave it alone. Jesus says that here is your opportunity for ministry. Here is your opportunity to do what needs to be done. In the book of Acts, in the 14th chapter and also in the 16th chapter, it talks about Christ as being the Lord of the harvest. It talks about Christ as being the head of the church. It talks about Christ being the one who will provide for his church so that his church can serve him. Read chapter 14, chapter 16 in Acts and see what God says. He will provide if his church will serve him. What do we say? He will provide if his church will serve him. So there's a question that needs to be answered here concerning the church at Philadelphia. I know that you have some strength. I know that you have kept my word. I know that you have not denied my name. And here's the problem. There's opposition to the church. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. I'm going to make your enemies your footstool. I'm going to make your enemies bow before you. I, your enemies are going to have to acknowledge you. What's going on in the church? There are people in the church who claim they are Jews. By blood, they are Jews. But they are not believers. They do not receive the Son of God as being the Messiah. They do not believe that Jesus... <coughs> was the Messiah sent by God. So they are opposing everything that these believers are representing here. You have people today who oppose what you and I claim as a church, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. As we said last week, there's a lot of people who say that all roads lead to heaven. All roads lead to God. No, all roads don't. There's a, there is a major highway that leads straight to hell. There is major judgment that's going to come upon people one day who are claiming this in the name of God and they're no closer to God than anything. Narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. Narrow is the way that goes to God. Broad is that highway that leads to hell. That's the easy street to follow. That's the easy street. All roads do not lead to God. But these people have an opportunity to witness to their opposition. 
there's a couple of problems that they face. And one of them is that they are not a real big church and they may not have a whole lot of power. But will they take what faith they have and share with these people? who are a part of that open door that Jesus has set before them, will they have enough faith to step out and share this message? And Jesus says they will because they're faithful, because they love each other, and because they are open to love other people. A lack of strength on their part? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a part of it. But you know what else? There is this group of people that Jesus says their opposition is guided by Satan. Your opposition is from the synagogue of Satan. Your opposition are from people who claim one thing, but they are something else. And this is powerful opposition straight from Satan. Indeed, I will come and make them worship before your feet. Why is he going to do this? I'm going to show them that I loved you and gave you an opportunity to serve me. I'm going to show them that you belong to me. I'm going to show them this because you have chosen to persevere under persecution. I'm going to show these people something. These people from the synagogue of Satan were excluding the believers in the church at Philadelphia. They were trying to make these believers give up. It's not easy to witness to people when there is such strong opposition. You know, sometimes that makes today's Christians fearful. I don't know what those people are going to do to me. I don't know what those people are going to say to me. I don't know how they're going to react to me. What difference does it make? Be faithful with the testimony of Christ. You know, I've seen circumstances like that, and I've seen circumstances where except for the hand of God, things could have turned out a whole lot different than they did. I have seen some of this opposition. I've experienced part of that opposition. You know, I was sent to the hospital to witness to a fellow who had been shot and they weren't expecting him to live. And while I'm in the room, he's alert, but still in grave danger. And as I share the gospel with him, someone walks in and stands beside us while we're sharing Christ with the man. The man calls on Christ and wants to pray to receive Christ, and the man standing next to me is the one that shot him. Next thing I know, by the time we get through praying, the police come in and take this man out. And I'm thinking to myself, what just happened? What just happened? We may not ever experience anything quite like that. But are we fearful just to talk to someone we love? Are we afraid of what they're going to say or what they're going to think? Fear holds us back. What Jesus said about this church is faith sees opportunity faith sees opportunity faith sees the open door fear says don't go through that door you don't know what's on the other side of that door don't go through that door 
You know, I think there's, I think there's three major things that hinders the work of the church today. The first one is fear. I'm not sure what somebody else is going to think. I'm not sure what someone else is going to say. And rather than me say something, I just won't say it. Fear of stepping out and doing what we really know we ought to be doing. Fear is the one. The second one is a bad one for the church is because of unbelief. I don't believe Jesus is going to do for me what he said he's going to do if I'm standing in front of this person talking to him or her. You see, there is a major fear in church, and there is, even though we are believers, we still have episodes of unbelief where I'm not sure God's going to do what he said he would do. That's a bad feeling to have. It's a real bad feeling to have for the church. And the other one is this. I believe I'll just wait on this a little while. Put it off. Push it back. I'll get to it later. You know, that's why... There are uh, so, so many people who will tell you when you're trying to share Christ with them that now is not the right time. I'll do it later. Folks, later may never come. Later may never get here. Fear, unbelief, Procrastination, maybe. That's a big word with a little meaning saying, I'm not going to do it. I'll just put it off. And that's three of the hardest things to deal with in church. And these three things will cause the church to miss their opportunity. But I'm going to do this because you are persevering. I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial which will come upon the whole world to test those on the earth. You see, this church is already undergoing a few troubles and trials and tribulations because of their opposition. But this is more than this. This is not just talking about the immediate need. This is talking about when he says the hour of trial. He's talking about... What is he talking about? He's talking about the tribulation. And in essence, the church you know and I know is going to be taken out of this world before tribulation time. And he's telling the church, you're not going to undergo this trouble of tribulation. I'm going to have you mine before that particular time. You're going to belong to me. You're going to be with me before the hour of tribulation. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, and, and their reason for not taking this shot that they have for this pandemic situation was that they think that in that shot there is something that is going to be the mark of the beast. And I'm thinking to myself, you may not know that I'm not going to be here to get that mark. I'm going to be up there. I don't have to worry about that mark. Somebody else is going to have to worry about it, not me. He said he was going to protect me from that hour of tribulation. He said I'm not going to be here when that happens. He said he had it under control. I believe him. I think he's got it in his hands. I don't have to worry about that. And that was the only reason they had? Well, I, I thought to myself, and I was very kind when I thought. Sometimes I'm not that way, but I was this time. 
And I told him, if you are really worried about that, the thing that you really ought to check is your relationship with Christ. Because if you're worried about that, you think you're going to be here when I'm gone. So I just tell you now, I'm not going to be here for that time. And if you think you might be, then you need to check your relationship with Christ. That was pretty diplomatic, wasn't it? But this church was open to love, and this church was open to doing what Christ had set before them to do. I will come quickly. This tribulation is going to cover the whole world. And I'm thankful I'm not going to be here. I'm going to test those who dwell on the earth. I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have. Don't let anyone take your faith from you. Don't let anyone take your crown from you. Hold to your faith. Do what you were placed here to do. He who overcomes... I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. As I was thinking about this verse, and I'm thinking to myself, the thing that used to be a recognition in the ancient times they would erect a pillar in the city and on that pillar would be the name of a great leader and it would be a source of recognition for the greatness of that person and it would be a reminder to people of what God can do and God said I will make him a pillar and we're not talking about a physical pillar, but we're talking about a strong saint of God. I will make him recognized as being mine. And I was thinking about this pillar that would be erected in those cities, and I'm thinking with our culture today, tearing down all of the things that represent the greatness of our nation. I'm thinking... Lord, they would try down, try all their best to tear you apart too. To tear everything apart that represents you. And folks, we're in a nation today that's tearing apart everything that represents Almighty God. And they think we should be a little more progressive. Now, I think we need to be a little more honest. I think we ought to recognize a little more that God created us. And I think we ought to realize that God has judgment in his hands. And I think we ought to realize that at the blink of an eye, he could in unleash his judgment on this ungodly nation and against ungodly leaders. And it could happen. I don't see how he holds back. But the church at Philadelphia was open to love the people that they were supposed to minister to. And our church today should be open to minister to the lost, to find that great open door that God has for our church and serve him. This is what we need to do. Open to love. Take advantage of that open door. Jesus said, I opened the door. A man cannot close the door that I open, but I can also shut the door. And while the door is open, we need to be serving, open to love, open 
to sharing the witness and the gospel of Christ, no matter. Get rid of the fear, get rid of the unbelief, get rid of the procrastination. Let's serve Jesus now, right now. Let's pray. God, we thank you that we are able to love because you loved us. Thank you, Father, for this great love. And God, I pray today that if there's a person here that doesn't know Jesus as Savior, that today would be the day that you would speak to that heart and draw them to you in salvation. Father, I pray for Christian people, for this church, that we would be alert to the open door before us to minister and serve. God, speak to the hearts of your people. Let them come and pray for a lost friend. Let them come and pray for a family member. Let them pray, O oh Lord, to be able to see the open door. And let them pray for boldness and power to go through that door and serve you better. In Christ's name, amen. Listen carefully. To God speak, do what he asked you to do this morning. Let's stand and share together. Jesus loves me, this I know. Tommy, close us in prayer. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us, and we're thankful to be here at church today. Lord, we know that you have opened doors for us. We pray that you will take us and use us, Lord, 
for your will and your glory. That as we go forth this day, we will show your love and just do all we can, Lord, to honor you and to bring others to know you. That that is the important thing, that we grow your kingdom, Lord. And just be with us and watch over us, Lord, as we go forth and just let us be servants for you, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.